Hey guys, welcome back to the All Gen Gamers podcast. This is episode number 122, and we are recording Wednesday, December 5th. I'm one of your hosts, Jason Heine, and I'm also joined by all of our good friends, Mr. Pete Dorr. Pete, welcome back. How are you doing? Doing pretty good. And we have the other Jason, Metal Jesus Rocks. What's up, Jason? Not much, man. Glad to be here. And John is going to be joining us shortly. He is uh, out and about, and he has said he'll be here shortly. So once he gets into uh, the Skypeage, I'll just bring him on in. So, uh, gosh, guys, it's been a while, Pete. It's been a while. Yep. Now, last time you were out and you're enjoying yourself with a very magical concert now. And we we talked about this briefly. We we're we we're like, wait, so wait, what is it? Is it a, like a Zelda? Is there video game music? And then there's video game visuals like we just explain exactly what happened that night. So I went to Madison Square Garden to see the uh, what is called Zelda Symphony of the Goddess uh, concert. And anybody that's ever been to Final Fantasy Distant Worlds, uh, it's very similar to that where they play an orchestra plays uh, Zelda music with video game footage playing on a couple of screens, big screens. So they played music from the classics a little bit from the original uh, Adventures of Link, and they did some Link to the Past, mm-hmm. Ocarina of Time. Uh, they did... Majora's Mask was one of their encores. Um, they did Wind Waker, Twilight Princess. So they played music for all those games with footage of the game playing in the background. And, you know, they, they do it up so that it sounds unlike anything you can hear anywhere else. Uh, I think there was only like a limited edition CD released just for the Twilight Princess music um, on Kickstarter and there's only a thousand of them. So the only way you can actually hear these renditions of Zelda music is either by watching videos on YouTube where of course the music, you know, the quality sucks. The You're not going to want to download those to an MP3 and listen to them or you actually go and you listen. And, you know, I am not the biggest Zelda fan out there. I definitely, you know, I play the games, but I think the fact that I still do not even own Skyward Sword or have much of a inkling to actually play it, uh, you know, it, that that just shows you that I'm not like, oh my god, Zelda, Zelda. And I just went because I have an appreciation for not just the Zelda series, and I enjoy, you know, quite a bit of them, Link to the Past, Ocarina, Link's Awakening, and such. But uh, I just have an appreciation for video game music, and it was really nice except for one thing. I bought my tickets very late, uh, only about a week before the concert, so when I bought my tickets, I chose best available at the time, which was essentially the very back row center. Uh, now, normally that wouldn't be so bad, but in Madison Square Garden, um, and by the way, at the same time, there was a Justin Bieber concert going on, so there was a lot of very young hyper girls. I, I, now, this was my first time in the Madison Square Garden, uh, from what I know, unless I was there when I was really young. I don't remember, but... I guess there's like a theater room and then there's like uh, the sports complex for it or something because, you know, I I didn't see any traces of where the Justin Bieber concert took place. However, I was in the theater room and let me just warn you, if you ever get assigned to the back like two or three rows in the theater room at Madison Square Garden, you're going to be hot as shit because you're essentially like you've got walls not too far from you on the left and right sides. And it blocks off all airflow. So I was sweating my ass off the whole time I was there because it was sold out. So you surrounded by people. And just a warning, anybody that is around five foot eleven or taller, it is fucking uncomfortable. Like let me tell you, I was in like physical pain after about an hour because the seats there are so cramped. The guy next to me was six foot seven. He couldn't even sit down. He had to stand up the entire time. Huh. He was basically sitting on the top of his seat. So Metal Jesus, if you ever <laughs> plan on going to Madison Square Garden for whatever reason, you won't be able to sit. And I'm what? not even, I mean, unless it's just the back row that was like that, maybe there's like an extra inch or two cut off of the, the space back there. But man, yeah, the guy couldn't even sit down. He had to sit on top of his seat. Well, that's really stupid. No Beaver what... fever for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, now it's funny you mentioned Justin Bieber because Phantom Jess was posting that she went to a concert that night. And now, do we know? Did she go to uh, Justin Bieber? Or no, did she no, go... she, she went to okay. Zelda. Okay. 
Because she was totally kidding that she went to Justin. I was like, really? I wouldn't, I mean, I wouldn't put it past her. She put it to that. I'm not judging. I'm not judging, you know, to each their own. But I thought that was pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> Same building, though. Huh? That must be a massive building. Yeah, it's I mean, it was a little confusing because I didn't even I was trying to see like where their concert was compared to ours, but I couldn't really tell. Um, and just a quick shout out to Pete, who I ran into at, uh, at in the lobby there when I was picking up my Zelda shirt for saying hello, picked me up from the crowd. And it was actually a lot of people were um, returning to see this for like a second time because earlier, I think in the year, it was, I'm not sure if you guys remember, they had a 25th anniversary Zelda orchestra, which took place three times across uh, the United States. Uh, I forget if it went anywhere else, but it was sort of like a really limited thing. And then they sort of announced this more um, diverse uh, world tour that they, that luckily came in my area. There's a show on. It's only 16 more minutes. Whoa. What was that? Yeah, I do remember that, actually. The concert you're talking about. Yeah, and it never came to the New York area, so... Oh. I definitely jumped on it this time. And it wasn't cheap. It was like $75, $80. <laughs> yeah. So, How many people were there, do you think? Um... I don't know, however many the theater room can fit. Hmm. Yeah, it sounds awesome. We were, Just, we were talking uh, about um, what, what concerts we would like to see that way. And and what did you guys say? <laughs> I said Chrono Trigger, Donkey Kong. Uh, you should really go to a video games live concert if you can. Yeah. Do, they, they play Chrono Trigger, Chrono Cross. Now, every concert hmm. for them is random. So you never know what you're going to get each time, but you can get one time I went, I've been to it three times now and they've played Chrono Cross and Chrono Trigger music. Um, I think, no, they haven't done Donkey Kong, but they play all kinds of stuff. Like they did Shadow of the Colossus one time. It's pretty cool. Now, is it typically uh, symphony music or is it a band? At Video Games Live, it depends on the... Um, the game series that they're playing so if it's like shadow of the colossus it'll be all symphony but if they're doing say final fantasy one winged angel or halo uh tommy tallarico will come out and play like the guitar and stuff so they, they kind of mix it up it's more of like a a show more than an orchestra at times mm -hmm. plus every place they go to they use like a different orchestra so it's not the same traveling orchestra it's it's different every location they go to. Usually they take like the local big name orchestra to play with them. Hmm. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. That kind of reminds me at the Portland Retro Gaming Expo this year, there was a band that was playing off on a stage. Now they were a band, so I, I think they had four or five players, but man, they did, they were amazing. They did jazzy rock versions of classic songs that we all know, like the Mario theme and Metroid and a bunch of stuff like that, but did you get to hear them, Jason, at all? No, mm -mm, I did not. They were fantastic. They were truly excellent. And they were just kind of playing off to the side, you know? It was yeah, pretty cool. That's cool. So you guys have never been to sort of like a video game live orchestra type event at all? I haven't, no. Mm -mm. Uh -uh. Me neither. So I highly encourage it. I'm telling you, if they ever come to your area, especially video games live, um, I didn't. I haven't seen them for like the past year and a half or so. But if they ever come to your area, I'm telling you, I think you'd really enjoy it because it's not like you go there and you have to be like a diehard Final Fantasy or Zelda fan exclusively, like the other concerts. Like they play all kinds of stuff, and I think you'd be really surprised with the kind of weird stuff they choose. Like they'll play like Civilization music. Um, hmm. I'm trying to remember some like more offbeat stuff they've done, but yeah, they they don't play like they they do your fan favorites like Zelda and Castlevania and stuff like that, but they do some really offbeat stuff. Like I know they do. Uh, I've never played the game, but they do uh, Advent Rising. I think is the game. Hmm. Yeah, they, because one of the the composer for that is like one of the head guys of Video Games Live, so. Yeah, I'm looking on their site right now, and man, they okay, so they tour all year long, and right now, oh, okay, so they just played Vancouver, BC on November 6th, and they played the uh, Tacoma Dome 
Mm. Was it the Tacoma Dome? But it was in Tacoma on November 9th. So, and then now they're going to be in Texas in January and uh, go through Louisiana and Florida. So, wow. That's, okay. So, I'm going to follow them on Twitter because I think next time they, they play around here, I'd like to go. That'd be cool. Yeah, I'm looking at this site now, too. It looks like uh, they got one more left in Dubai. So, anybody that's in Dubai, uh, you can check them out on December 14th. Um, hmm. Other than that, sold wow. out, sold out. Sold out everywhere. That's amazing. Most of them, some of them barely sold out. I mean, bar- uh, sold lots they put on their website. Oh, okay. Uh, just real quick for anybody that wants to see the tour dates, just go to videogameslive.com. Next year, in January, they're coming to Austin, Texas, Richardson, Texas, Lafayette, uh, LA, Jacksonville, Florida, St. Petersburg, Florida, and then in Hartford. April, Hartford. Yeah. Yep. Hmm. Man, they're really going. They're Brazil, Chile, Peru to be announced. Australia, they're going all over. Worldwide, man, that's cool. Yeah, that is cool. Make sure to follow us, the All Gen Gamers Podcast, on Facebook and Twitter. Subscribe to us on YouTube and in iTunes. And don't forget about those iTunes ratings, guys. We appreciate those. And for all other info, links, and our forum, please visit www.allgengamers.com.